Welcome to an introduction to traumatic brain injuries, in short, TBI. Traumatic brain injuries is defined as acquired brain injury that is sustained from trauma to the brain. This includes strokes, anoxia, tumors, and meningitis, among many others. TBI is commonly caused by falls, traffic accidents, and incidents, sports injuries, assaults, and war zone related injuries. The impact from these accidents could lead to the penetration of the skull or have an impact on the brain. Statistics have shown that at least a million people in the UK are taught to live through the long-term effects of TBI, while every 558 in 100,000 people are believed to sustain a brain injury in the UK. In 2011-2012, to 2012, over 350,000 people were admitted into hospital for TBI. Males are 1.5 times more susceptible to TBI than females. The age groups which are more at risk of contracting TBI are those from 0 to 5 years old, 15 to 24 years old, and the elderly who are 75 years and above. TBI has behavioral, cognitive, and physical consequences to the patients. The patient may lose consciousness depending on the severity of the TBI. In addition, relationships between the patients, their friends and family may be affected. TBI may be diagnosed using either CT scans or MRI scans. Furthermore, the patient may also need to undergo neuropsychological assessment to determine the severity of the brain injury and to ascertain which parts of the brain are most affected. Interviews and observations may be carried out to test the various brain functions. Some scales may also be used. An example is the Rancho Los Amigo scale that is a revised 10-level scale that assesses cognitive function. This diagram here shows you the brain. It consists of four lobes, the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital lobe, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. The effects of an inflicted traumatic injury to the brain will vary depending on the part of the brain damaged. Now let's begin with the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is involved in decision-making, emotions, and initiation of movement. Since it occupies the most anterior position of the brain, it is the lobe most likely to get damaged. Damage to the frontal lobe will result in the inability to make good choices and recognize consequences, increased irritability in behavior, and little spontaneous facial expression. One famous case study is Phineas Gage, a 25-year-old railroad construction worker who suffered a left frontal lobe damage. The damage transformed him into a rude and an aggressive man who was unable to hold down a job. Moving on to the parietal lobe, it integrates sensory information among various modalities such as proprioception, touch, temperature and pain. It also plays important roles in knowledge of numbers and in the manipulation of objects. One result of parietal lobe injuries is Gertzman syndrome, where the patient will experience right-left confusion, difficulty in writing, disorders of language, and the inability to perceive objects normally. Bilateral damage will result in the inability to voluntarily control the gaze and accurately reach for an object with visual guidance, which is called Bolint syndrome. Damage to the right lobe leads to the contralateral neglect, which impairs self-care skills such as dressing and washing. The temporal lobe. It lies behind our ears and contains the auditory cortex. It allows us to interpret sound and stores most of our memories. It is involved in aspects of language and also has a role in visual perception and sexual behavior. Lesions to the left side of this lobe results in decreased recall of verbal and visual content, speech perception, disruption to the recognition of words, and impaired memory for verbal material. Lesions to the right side of this lobe results in decreased recognition of tonal sequences, recognition of visual content, for example, the recall of faces, loss of inhibition of talking, and in the recall of non-verbal materials such as music and drawings. The occipital lobe. 
This lobe lies in the most posterior part of the brain. Its main function is to control the visual aspects. Damage to this lobe causes visual defects such as poor processing of visual information, difficulty in visually locating objects, difficulty in identifying colors, having hallucinations, visual distortions, and visual illusions, having the inability to recognize movement of objects, and getting scotoma, which is defined as partially diminished vision surrounded by a normal field of vision. The cerebellum. It has an important role in motor control, balance and equilibrium, and muscle tone. It does not initiate movement, but contributes to coordination, precision, and accurate timing. It is relatively well protected from trauma compared to the frontal and temporal lobes and brainstem. The consequences of damage to the cerebellum include the loss of coordination of motor movement, the inability to judge distance, movement tremors, slurred speech, and abnormal eye movements. The brainstem. It is an extremely important part of the brain as the nerve connections of the motor and sensory systems from the main part of the brain to the rest of the body pass through it. Damage to it causes difficulty in swallowing food and fluid, difficulty with balance and movement, dizziness and nausea, impaired arousal and sleep regulation, and impaired regulation of temperature, our heart rate and respiration. Now let's take a look at the general forms of treatment available for TBI. Treatment can take weeks to months depending on the severity and region of the brain affected. For mild injuries, simply over-the-counter painkillers are prescribed. Patients may need to be monitored for worsening of any condition and doctors will indicate when they can go back to normal routines. Being monitored also helps prevent post-concussion syndrome. For moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries, emergency care is needed to make sure the person has adequate oxygen, blood supply, and maintain blood pressure to prevent any further injury to the head or neck. Medications to limit secondary damage include diuretics, anti-seizure drugs, and coma-inducing drugs. Emergency surgery may be needed to remove clotted blood, hematomas, repairing skull fractures or removing skull fragments, and opening a window in the skull to relieve pressure inside the skull. Most people who have had a significant brain injury will require rehabilitation. They may need to relearn basic skills such as walking or talking, guided by occupational, physical, speech, psychiatric and recreational therapists. The goal is to improve their abilities to perform daily activities. To avoid the complications of TBI, preventions are of great importance. 75-80% to 80 of injuries are mild injuries or concussions from slipping, banging the head or small sports injuries. In order to prevent these, wear seat belts and check for properly functioning airbags. Do not drive while intoxicated. Wear helmets. Use handrails and avoid tripping hazards to prevent falling. Install window guards and safety gates at top of stairs for children. Prevent shaken baby syndrome by avoiding maltreatment and abuse. And finally, carers, coaches and athletes should know how to look out for concussions and other signs of injuries. In conclusion, I hope you have gained insight to TBI from this video. Thank you and goodbye.